In previous videos I showed how radio controlled hobby servos work, here a micro servo is controlled by an Arduino Uno. The fact that Pico servo does not necessarily have to be the name of an even smaller version of a servo can be seen here. Based on a Raspberry Pico I've made a very large and powerful servo. Almost all mechanical components are made of PLA with a 3D printer. Screws, washers, threaded rods, two ball bearings and other small parts are also needed. I got the motor as a gift from RS Components years ago but haven't used it yet. Sometimes a project just needs a little longer to form. The electrical input power is supplied via an H-Bridge type BTS7960. The already mentioned Raspberry Pico runs the control software. The 12V motor is here only controlled with a fraction of the maximum power, that is 36 watts. For a little more comfort I connected a 0.96 inch OLED display. To give the Pico an idea of what is going on in its environment, three hall sensors type AH3503 are used. These sensors provide an output signal that is equivalent to the strength and direction of the magnetic flux density passing through them. In simple words, without a magnetic field the output voltage is about half the input voltage of 5 volts. If a magnet is held over the sensor with the magnetic south pole pointing downwards, the output voltage drops, here to 0.8V. If the magnet is held over the sensor with the north pole pointing downwards, the output voltage rises to almost 4V. The Raspberry Pico works with logic levels of no more than 3.3V. A voltage divider composed of a 3 kilo ohm resistor and a 3 volt SENA diode prevents the logic voltage at the pin of the Pico from being exceeded. Without a magnet, the corresponding pin returns a logical 1, while in the presence of a magnet with a south pole towards the hall sensor, a logical 0 is returned. If the magnet is held with the north pole pointing to the sensor, the output remains at the logical 1. This changes when the hall sensor is flipped around, the polarity of the magnets and the alignment of the hall sensors must therefore be kept in mind. A sensor disc with three magnets is attached directly to the motor shaft. This disc is scanned by two hall sensors, in a previous video I described in detail why two sensors are needed to detect rotation. In another video I showed how the motor control works in principle. With three magnets and two sensors, the rotation of the motor can be divided into 12 steps. According to the datasheet, the motor turns at little over 4300 revolutions per minute, which corresponds to around 50,000 pulses per minute or around 860 pulses per second at the inputs of the microcontroller. An experiment shows whether the Raspberry Pico can process these pulses at that speed and whether the sensors still deliver clean output signals. A command is sent to the Pico to turn the motor by 1200 pulses at full speed. If the motor is stopped, the marked magnet must be over the two sensors again. That's exactly what happens, otherwise not all pulses would have been processed correctly by the software. Going back to zero also works without any problems. The Raspberry Pico can run mini programs independently of the main program due to special hardware, I make use of this property to quickly process the input signals. As with the standard RC servos, the torque of the motor is amplified by a gearbox composed of 5 gears. The overall gear reduction of the unit is approximately 355 to 1, so the motor must do 355 revolutions to rotate the red gear once. The rotation of the output shaft can be divided into 4260 steps with the sensor wheel on the motor, theoretically. Remember that every gearbox inevitably has a certain amount of backlash. Nevertheless, the servo lever can be moved quite precisely with high torque, 
but not really fast. By replacing two gears, the reduction is lowered to 117 to 1. The servo lever now rotates at about three times the speed. After switching the servo on, the current position of the lever isn't known. To change that, a third hall sensor is needed. This is attached in such a way that a magnet on the gear wheel of the output shaft can be detected. After switching on, the motor is rotated until this sensor is triggered. From this point on, the Raspberry Pico can command the lever to any given position. The servo can also be used as a geared motor. The rotational speed of the output shaft is set by the electrical power supplied to the motor via the pulse width of the input signal at the edge bridge. If a load is applied to the servo lever, the rotation will slow down, eventually stopping. With the sensor feedback, the speed can be kept constant. The number of pulses per second at the sensor disk is equivalent to the rotation speed of the motor. If the output shaft is slowed down by a load, the microcontroller recognizes this and in turn increases the input power of the motor by adjusting the pulse width signal. If the load on the servo lever is reduced, the power supplied to the motor is also reduced again. Thus, the rotation speed remains constant even with changing loads. In order to demonstrate this principle, the power adjustment is done here with a visible delay. Indirectly, the Pico can measure the torque applied to the output shaft by comparing the currently required pulse width with the pulse width at idle. The maximum torque of the motor is so high that it could destroy the plastic gears. Overload can be prevented by comparing the electrical power delivered to the motor with the speed of the sensor disk. An emergency shutdown is initiated or the motor current is at least reduced to a safe level whenever the mechanical load exceeds the given threshold. The movement of the servo can be optimized with so called PID control circuits, I've already made a video on this as well. How are the control signals transmitted to the servo? Well, the Raspberry Pico has an USB interface and in the simplest case, this can be used to control the servo. If another pin of the Pico is used, the servo can also be controlled with the usual pulse width signal from RC servos, which is done here with an Arduino Uno. A 50Hz square wave signal with a pulse width of 1 millisecond corresponds to an angle of minus 45 degrees. 1.5 milliseconds correspond to the neutral position of 0 degrees... ...and 2 milliseconds correspond to plus 45 degrees at the lever of the two servos. Also thinkable are I2C or SPI or whatever you need and the Raspberry Pico can deliver. And if you don't own a 3D printer, you can also modify a wiper motor to turn it into a servo. On the motor I am using, the motor shaft sticks out at the rear end so that I could cut off the cap on the housing and glue a sheet metal sensor disc to it. This wheel is scanned by two infrared light sensors. The reduction of the warm gear is 72 to 1. The limit switch for the servo lever is another photo sensor. Together with the OLED screen, the same pins are used on the Pico, only a few parameters in the software have to be adjusted. Here I have connected a Raspberry Pi to the Pico servo and operate everything via a 12V battery. There is a step down converter in the servo that outputs 5V via a USB socket which supplies the single board computer. The web server Apache runs on the Raspberry Pi. With that you have a servo that can be controlled and programmed via a browser, shown here with my smartphone. The 3D files, circuit diagrams and software can be found on my website for download. 
And if you would like to support me in creating more open source projects like this, you are welcome to click the donate button on my website. Many thanks to all the great people who have already made use of it, a special donation triggered the construction of this Pico Servo. Thanks for watching and I'll be back!